Becky to welcome you this morning to Western Mennonite Church for our um, morning service. And I'm um, just going to ask, can everybody here um, raise your hand if you um, can think of one thing you're thankful for? <laughs> well, most of you, I think, or at least... I think everybody can at least think of one thing that you're thankful for, and that's good. So today will be a good day if you can think of at least one thing. So today we have, um, Tara's going to be bringing us the message about a parable that's um, one of my favorite ones, but it's also one that's very thought-provoking. And so um, it'll give us something to think about. So for our call to worship, um, I have this little saying, I'm gonna, or not saying, um, I have this call to worship for you. Come, come and worship, you who woke up early and you who woke up late, you who often come and you who don't, whether we are first or last or somewhere in between, there is room for all of us in God's kingdom and more than enough grace to go around. Let's worship God together. You bow with me in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for today and for all the things that we can think of that we're thankful for and that you are so gracious to provide for us. God, I just thank you for this day that we can come together and hear the word from Terry. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, we're going to have um, some singing by Will and Cherry will be playing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As things happen, Cherry and I were scheduled to be at Hammer Creek Mennonite Church in Lindis, Pennsylvania this morning. We'd been done because it's 1 o'clock there already. And then another church tonight near New Holland, Pennsylvania with the band. But uh, we had a 10-day Pennsylvania, Virginia tour that was canceled uh, because of covid Two churches uh, in the uh, on the tour route that we had actually shut down because they had so many COVID cases, and uh, we wound up canceling the tour. So we're here this morning instead of in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I'm used to uh, singing with <laughs> with uh, three other guys standing beside of me, enough instrumentalists behind us to cover up all our mistakes. So, uh, uh, and I'm used to not singing lead or melody either. But uh, this morning, uh, with Jerry leading out on the piano, you all will be singing uh, following her because I came down with a cold Wednesday or Thursday. I tested negative for COVID, but uh, my voice isn't much, not the higher note, so uh, follow her. So uh, I'm here to tell you what number of songs we're singing. <laughs> so we'll start out with, uh, uh, everybody have their purple books, uh, with the 764 is a number over a thousand tongues. And we'll do verses one, two, four, and five. We'll skip three. I'll be reading the scripture today, and it's found in Matthew 20, 1 through 15. 
For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go out and work in my vineyard, <clears throat> and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go out and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers in and pay, pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those who were hired first, they expected more. But each of them, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have <clears throat> equal to us who have been borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for one denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Uh, a denarius was the amount that a, a, a laborer got paid for a day's wages back in Jesus' time. Today, uh, Darla made this neat little sign here. Uh, today, a denarius is worth about a dollar and sixty-seven cents, and. Uh, how many of you could live on a daily wage of a dollar sixty-seven? It'd be a little hard to pay the the mortgage and the food bill and everything like that on a, on a daily wage. So that's how things have changed. But uh, let's say a, a denarius. Uh, let's say a, a denarius was an average pay for today. About how much would that be? Would you say a denarius? What What's the average uh, laborer's pay daily pay with today? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Hundred bucks. Minimum wage is fifteen. Minimum wage is fifteen. Hundred, hundred dollars, hundred and twenty. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to kind of contemporize this parable, and I'm going to be really generous for the daily wage. I'm going to say two hundred dollars. Okay. And. Uh, for a 12-hour day, that, that's uh, probably about $15 an hour, something like that. And uh, I don't have a calculator to figure that out, but, but anyway. And so uh, a, man, <clears throat> a man owning a vineyard somewhere in the vicinity of Western Mennonite Church uh, went into West Salem one morning to hire some workers to harvest his grapes. And he agreed to pay each <clears throat> worker $200 for the day. A, a generous wage, actually. And so they went out and started to work about 6 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and then around 9 o'clock, <clears throat> he, he went back into town. Uh, and he saw some people standing by McDonald's, just kind of loitering, loitering around there. Uh, and looking like they didn't have anything to do. And so he asked them if they would be interested in working out in his grape and out in his vineyard, picking grapes. And they said, yes. And so he said, okay, well, go out down Wallace Road to my vineyard, and, and I'll pay you whatever's fair. And so they did. And the vineyard owner decided that he could use more workers, and so he went back into town again, West Salem, 
at uh, around noon and around three o'clock, and he saw a bunch of people hanging around. <coughs> well. <coughs> <clears throat> and he saw a bunch of people just loitering around Burger King, looking like they didn't have much to do or anything to do. And he asked them if they would be interested in working. They said, yeah, yeah. So he sent them out to his vineyard fields to help harvest his grapes, and they did. And then uh, the vineyard owner went into town again. He had to pick up some supplies. And he, he saw, he was by Taco Bell, and he saw some other fellows kind of lingering around there. Uh, Ray Nussbaum, and, and Mark Griffith, and uh, James, uh, or Jim was lording there, but he looked like he wasn't wanting to work, so they couldn't talk to him. But they were there hanging around Taco Bell, and, and the vineyard owner said, Are you guys interested in working? Or he said, Why aren't you guys working? And they said, Well, nobody's hired us. And you can just look at them and see why probably nobody would hire them, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, but the vineyard said, oh, Okay, well, I'll hire you. Don't you there's only an hour left, but uh, you can go out and work for an hour in my vineyard until quitting time. And so they did. So they went out into the vineyard and they worked for an hour. And then at six o'clock, which was the normal quitting time for laborers, uh, the uh, vineyard owner told the foreman, call in the workers, call in the workers and pay them their wages for the day. But he, he did an interesting thing. He said, but first have paid the ones who were hired last first, which is kind of unusual anyway. And uh, and pay the ones who were hired first last. And so the foreman had them all line up according to when they were hired. The ones that were hired most recently that worked only an hour, they were at the front of the, the pay line. And those who were hired at, and started work at six o'clock in the morning, they were at the end of the line. And apparently the foreman had told, or the owner had told the foreman ahead of time what to pay all these workers. And so as the ones who were hired last, like uh, Ray and, and Mark and, and Dave, uh, they were quite surprised to get $200 for working only an hour. That's $200 an hour. They were quite pleased with that, a very generous income. And the ones standing in line behind those who were hired last thought, oh boy. Boy, I wonder what he's going to pay us. And when the ones who were hired first finally uh, got up to the paymaster, the foreman, to receive their money, they were given $200, just as they, what they had agreed to work for. Now, I was one of those that was, went out at 6 o'clock in the morning and worked all day. And I saw these three fellows get paid $200, and I got paid $200, and I was pretty upset. <laughs> I mean, that's not fair. That's just not fair. How would you feel if you worked all day picking grapes for $200, but someone else working with you got paid $200 for working only one hour? How would you feel? That's, that's just unfair. At the very least, you would probably go home and grumble about that employer, which by the way I did, grumble about that employer to my wife and to my family that he was really unfair. And then I decided to go to that employer and, and, and confront him. And, and, and I complained to him. I didn't think it was fair that I worked all day long did most of the work throughout the hottest part of the day and got paid the same as those who only worked one hour. But the vineyard owner told me that, I, that he wasn't being unfair. 
I mean, he paid me what I had agreed to work for that day, $200, which was a very generous salary for a, a worker that day. And yes, that's what I agreed to work for. And he said, what is it to you that if I gave the others, Ray and Mark and Dave, what is it to you if I gave them the same amount for working less hours? Did, maybe they needed the money just as bad as you did. Besides, he said it was his money and couldn't he be generous to those if he wanted to be those who were hired later? Well, the employer had me there. In this parable, Jesus is describing what God is like. Sometimes God's sense of fairness and generosity is different than what people expect. God is generous to people, but sometimes he seems like he is more generous to some that we more generous than we think he ought to be. Maybe you have worked hard all your life to make a comfortable living. Well, you have a neighbor who hasn't worked a day in his life because he or she inherited money from their family. Just isn't fair, is it? Or maybe, maybe you know some people or uh, maybe you know some people who, who can eat anything they want and not gain a pound. Well, you gain weight by just looking at sweets. That's just not fair. Amen. Amen. <laughs> or, or maybe you are uh, quite uh, vulnerable to illnesses and you get sick a lot. And you spend and use up all of your sick days from work. Well, there's another person who works with you who never gets sick. He's never ill. He's always healthy and well. That's just not fair, is it? Or maybe uh, you had to study hard in high, high school to get C's and B's. And that other student in the next desk over, next desk over, didn't study at all and got AIDS all the time. Just not fair. Or maybe you've been a Christian all your life and have spent all your life trying to live a, a faithful and godly life, pleasing to God. You, know, you haven't been perfect. You've messed up now and then. But you really tried to live a faithful, godly life. You've tried to avoid getting involved in various kinds of ungodly things. And uh, now you're close to, close to your destination, heaven. But then there's that other person that you know or that you've heard about who's lived his whole life in an ungodly, wicked way. And when death closes in on that person, that person finds Jesus at the last minute. And he repents. He asks for forgiveness. And then he passes away. And God forgives him and takes him to heaven. Is that fair? You who've lived a godly life all your life, and this person who's lived an ungodly life all their life, and at the last minute he, he comes and believes in Jesus, and he's taken to heaven just like we are. Is that, is that fair? So often we are tempted to look at others and how generous God is to them. And we forget how generous God is to us. 
And instead of looking at what others have, we need to really take a good look at what we have. Can any of us say that God has not been tremendously generous to us? Look at your spouse, your brothers and sisters, your parents and grandparents, your children and, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren that God has given to you. Your family is irreplaceable. God has blessed each of us with, with a family. Look at what you're wearing this morning. Nice, clean clothes. You have warm coats. You have a car waiting for you outside after the worship service to take you home. You have a warm, comfortable home waiting for you when you do get home. You have food in the refrigerator, you have a TV, a computer, cell phones, a microwave oven. Most of us have these things. God has been very generous to us, has He? You know, we live in one of the richest countries of the world. We live a life many people of the world can only dream about. That's why so many of them want to come here. Have we earned, have, have, do we deserve that? Do we deserve that? Have we earned the right to be so much better off than many other people in the world? Just because we happen to be born here and live here? Are we not really like the vineyard workers who received $200 for only working an hour. God has been generous to us far beyond what we deserve. Now this is not to make you feel guilty, but this is to invite you to think about whether we have anything to grumble about. God is a generous God who gives and blesses, not always according to what people think is fair. But God gives out of his great love and grace to all people, not just to the just, but also to the unjust. Not just to believers, but to unbelievers. He is generous to the undeserving as well as to the seemingly deserving people. To the sinners as well as to the righteous. But you know, no one is really deserving of God's generosity. None of us is righteous on our own. The Bible says no one is righteous. No, not one. No. Our righteousness is only through Jesus. The Bible says the, whatever righteousness we have is like filthy rags. Our real righteousness, our true, true righteousness is only through Jesus. God operates by a standard of grace and not merit. People are used to thinking of rewards measured out according to services rendered often find it difficult to conceive of a just and righteous God acting generously to those who don't deserve it. But God does, and we as Christians of all people should be most aware of this. We as Christians should be most understanding that God is generous to the undeserved because he's been generous to us. He forgives us our sins. And we don't deserve it any more than anyone else, no matter how good we are and how bad someone else is. We don't deserve it any more than anyone else. God forgives us. God has allowed us to be born and to live in a rich, fertile, and free country. And we don't deserve it any more than those who have not been born here. 
We could have been born somewhere else, in a very poor place. But we were born here. We have opportunities for education and careers that many in the world don't have. And we don't deserve it any more than those who don't have such opportunities. We have access to medical care and medicine that many in the world may not have. And we don't deserve it any more than they do. It is only by the generous grace of God that we are born and live where we do and have what we have. And what we have might be less than some, but Certainly, it is more than many. Whenever we begin to think that God or life is unfair to us, just remember that we are probably most like the ones in the parable who receive $200 for working only an hour, compared to most or many people in the world. Now, this is nothing to feel guilty about. It's not the result of anything that we have done. It's not because we deserve it. It's just God's incomprehensible, inexplicable, unfathom unfathomable, uh, unfathomable, <laughs> generous grace. Generous grace. And this should move us to be humble and grateful and generous. Because all that we have truly comes from God. Mm -hmm. All that we have comes from God. And so as we sit with our families and friends around the Thanksgiving table this year, Let's remember what we do have and who is responsible for what we do have and give heartful thanks to a very generous God. He has been very generous to us. And again, that should make us, that should move us to be humble and grateful and generous. Let us pray. God, you have blessed us far beyond what we deserve. All that we have comes from you. All that we are is a gift from you. Our salvation is a gift from you. Your forgiveness to us is something we do not deserve. But out of your grace, you forgive us. Maybe we've never done hardly any bad things in our lifetime. But we don't deserve your grace any more than someone who's been bad in their life. Because there is no difference in us. And we have all sinned. And so, Lord, as we prepare ourselves for this Thanksgiving season, help us to recognize that all good gifts come from your hand. It's not really our own doing. Things could go the other direction very quickly in our lives. But as your grace, your abundant grace and mercy, that blesses us and all people. So Lord, help us to have attitudes that are humble and grateful and lives that are generous because you have been so generous to us. Let's go to number 156 in your book. There's a wideness in God's mercy. 156, and again we'll sing 1, 2, 4, and 5, skip 3.
Lord, we want to thank you for those uh, in our church who have had recent procedures done, uh, both Nancy and Kay. Lord, thank you for the procedures that they have undergone that is going to bless and improve their life and uh, help make life more enjoyable for them. Thank you, Lord, for the improvements that both are making. They are both doing well. And we just, Lord, give you praise and honor for that. That uh, both Nancy and Kay uh, are improving and their lives are getting better. And thanks to these procedures, but most of all, thanks to you because of your gift of healing and the wisdom that you gave the doctors and nurses how to do these things that can make our lives a little easier. So Lord, we just give you praise for that. Continue to be with Nancy and Kay as they grow stronger, as their uh, bodies heal, and as they continue to look to you for uh, healing, help them to be patient sometimes Healing takes time, and help them to be patient as their bodies heal. We pray, Lord, for those hostages in Haiti who might be uh, Mennonite cousins of ours. We pray, Lord, for their safety and their well-being. We pray, Lord, that at some point you, they will be released. Lord, we pray that none of them is being hurt or injured in any way. Oh, and uh, Lord, we, we just pray that your love and your protection be around them, surrounding them, taking care of them, until the day comes when they can be released and be free again. So Lord, watch over each one of them. May each one be drawn to you, to trust in you, for their well-being, for their life, for whatever lies down the road next for them. Help them to just entrust themselves to you as we do so now. Lord, uh, as Thanksgiving approaches, we, we will not be meeting the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Next Sunday is going to be a sabbatical Sunday. And so, Lord, we are starting to think about that now. And it sounds like this is going to be the 400th year, the 400th anniversary for Thanksgiving. And uh, so that might make it a, a special Thanksgiving that it has been around that long. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to make it a special one. Help us to be genuinely and truly thankful to you for all that you have done for us, and to be thankful and to show thankfulness, not only by giving you praise, but also how we treat others around us. Lord, we offer to you this word of thanks and praise. Hear our prayers, O Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're about a week and a half away from the Thanksgiving holiday, as we've been talking about here. So we're going to sing a Thanksgiving song. Uh, Thanksgiving should be year-round, not just one holiday, of course. But the uh, song number 120, For the Beauty of the Earth, it reflects on what Terry spoke to, as well as the uh, hearkening on to the upcoming holiday period. 120 for the beauty of the earth, and we'll do one, four, and five.
blessing and benediction. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us pray. Go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God who fills the hungry with good things fill us with Christ-like love and with consuming hunger for justice in our land and in our world. May the blessing of God the God of Sarah and Hagar, of Abraham and Isaac, the blessing of the child born of Mary and the blessing of the Holy Spirit who broods over us be with you all this day and this week. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.